rejoice, children of God, for the day of salvation has come. From the world headquarters of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, in Davao City, Philippines, the nations are gathered as one. Lifting up the praises of the Father, proclaiming His wonderful works through His Son, in North America, in South America, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in Australia, to the four corners of the globe, through the Sunshine Media Network International, united in joyful celebration, faithful children of God, worshiping in spirit and in truth, bringing glad tidings of the Father's salvation work, completed in His Son. Let us come to the Father and bring before Him the sounds of worship. And as we come before the presence of our Almighty Father, let us sanctify our hearts, minds, and spirits as we offer up our thanksgiving and sanctification prayer. Thank you. 
us all rise up. Let us give all the glory, all the honor, all the praise and the thanksgiving to the name of our Almighty Father, our Lord and King, Jesus Christ, the Creator of us all. And through His anointed and appointed Son, our beloved Pastor, Pastor Apollo Sikimuloy, that because of the Father's great love towards us, He came in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin which is in the flesh, that though we were sinners, He died for each and every one of us, that we through His suffering might receive eternal life and we will be free from the bondage of sin and of the serpent sea. We glorify the Almighty Father for now we are here because of that love and now we are free to glorify Him and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so sons and daughters of the Almighty Father, let us magnify His glorious name. Let us lift the name of the Almighty Father on high for He deserves our highest praise. For He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Our Almighty Father, our Lord and King, Jesus Christ, the Creator of us all. Hallelujah!
Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Creator of us all, through your appointed and anointed Son, our beloved Pastor, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy, we magnify your name, Father. We praise your name, hallelujah, which is the name above every name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. On this very special day, Father, the King Reigns Gospel Healing Crusade here in Chicago, Illinois, we offer unto you our highest praise, worship, and thanksgiving for the completion of your spiritual work of salvation in man. Hallelujah. Now the time has come 
and you have chosen a people that were not your people, a nation that your will not your nation, the Gentile race for Almighty, but you came to us and accepted us to become your own people. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Through your appointed son, you have complete, you completed your spiritual work of salvation. Everything is now being revealed, Father. The things that have been hidden and the mysteries of the kingdom. What, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Almighty Father, that we are now in the kingdom age. This is the, your time, Father Almighty, and your will be done on this earth. Hallelujah. The days of the Lord has come, and now you're, you are now reigning over all the nations of the earth. Father Almighty, hallelujah. In this, uh, the, uh, the fulfillment of your prayer 2,000 years ago are now completed, Father Almighty. Hallelujah. Your kingdom is here, Father, and your will be done is here. Hallelujah. Now your kingdom is now populated with all of your sons and daughters with the spirit of obedience to your perfect will. Hallelujah. 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 Father Almighty, in this year 20 and 23, we will start this year full of blessings and miracles hallelujah by faith father hallelujah hallelujah the harvest is here all men can now come and enter into the ark of their salvation which is your kingdom nation hallelujah now we can rejoice father we can celebrate hallelujah father almighty we pray for those who are gathered here today in this place Pour out your abundant blessings, Father, whether it is financial blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing for their physical bodies and salvation for their souls. By faith, Father, it shall be done upon them right now. Hallelujah. 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 Father Almighty, as we start in this first uh, King Reigns Gospel Healing Crusade, Hallelujah. Here in Chicago, Illinois, we give you back all the praises, glory, honor, and thanksgiving in your almighty name, our Father Almighty Lord Jesus Christ, through your appointed Son, our beloved Pastor, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Let us continue to worship Almighty Father in reading of His Holy Words. Open up with me in the book of Psalms 150. If you are there, say amen. 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 Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and heart. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. And let everything had breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Father. Woo! Victory shout. Praise the Father. It is indeed true, my brothers and sisters, that when all God's children come together, there is great joy and blessings upon us. Amen. In giving, in giving him all the praise, all the worship, and thanksgiving to Almighty Father. So let us sing and dance as we join the kingdom musicians in the songs of praise. Let us all Love is like a river, running and rolling, going to 
praise of Father. Hallelujah. Before you may be seated, my brothers and sisters, shake hands with one another and say, Rejoice, for the kingdom of God is here. Praise the Father's name. Hallelujah. As sons and daughters of the Almighty Father, through His appointed Son, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy, we are victorious, we are overcomers, and we are more than conquerors. We are trained soldiers in the army of goodness, armed with the weapons of the fruit of the Spirit, equipped with the manna of revelations bestowed unto us by His appointed Son, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy. And most of all, we are girded with our testimony. And we will overcome the devil with the words of our testimony. Of the million transformed by the message of the Son, we have with us today a soldier of the Almighty Father, and he will share his victory testimony of how his life was changed with the message of the appointed Son in the kingdom. To know more about his life, let us welcome Brother Hans Gabriel Marshall for his victory testimony. Praise the Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Father. Every say, everybody say, praise the Father. praise the Father. So first of all, all the glory, honor, praise, and thanksgiving I heartily give to the name of our Almighty Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Creator of us all, through His appointed Son, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy. Praise the Father. So my name is Sans Gabriel Marshall. I am 18 years old, and I am a proud student of the prestigious School of Divine Wisdom, which is the ACQ College of Ministries. Praise the Father. I was born in Manila and was raised in a very religious family. My parents were going from one religion to another, my brothers and sisters, in an attempt to find the truth. Everything quickly changed when my father got to listen to the message of the, our beloved pastor, Pastor Apollo Sikibuloy, on television. In a flash, he took our family from Manila to Cagayan de Oro, where he was the first to be baptized into the kingdom. Praise the Father. However, at that time, my brothers and sisters, my mother was still a persecutor of our beloved pastor. She saw the negative things about pastor online, and she believed them. However, the goodness of the Almighty Father did not falter, my brothers and sisters, because eventually, she prayed to the Almighty Father, and she too was enlightened and became a kingdom citizen in 2010. Praise the Father. Sooner or later, my biological brother, who was also secretly a persecutor, entered into the kingdom. But he was not yet really committed to the ministry. This changed, however, my brothers and sisters, when he joined the International Youth Convention and signed up to becoming a full-time miracle worker. Praise the Father. As a young kid enrolled in the Kingdom Children Growth School, my brothers and sisters, I was taught about the kingdom doctrines of repentance and obedience to the Father's will. But deep within, I did not understand what it truly meant. 2013 was when we moved back again to the National Capital Region, and during the King is Coming Tour of our beloved pastor at Inara Center, I was blessed and given the privilege to be part of the Kingdom Kids Orchestra to play the drums. Praise the Father. <laughs> However, being active in the kingdom, did not erase my worldly ambitions, my brothers and sisters. I thank the Almighty Father for giving me the talent to excel academically. I became competitive at school and was consistently an honor and top student. I even joined numerous, schools, numerous competitions outside. And despite having all of these achievements, my brothers and sisters, I was never truly satisfied. And I was longing for something that I did not know. Year 2020, my brothers and sisters, when the pandemic came. Since lockdowns were enforced across the nation, I would attend online classes, and at the time, I had the luxury of time, and I would report to the Pointed Sons prestigious multimedia ministry, the Sunshine Media Network International, as a news writer and a sports news reporter. Praise the Father. But still, my brothers and sisters, to be honest with you, I had no plans to be a full-time at that time. I knew that living such a life 
would not be easy, and I doubted if I could endure such hardships. I too wanted to be successful in the outside world. There's an ongoing battle within me. Of whom will I serve? Will it be myself or the Almighty Father through the appointed Son? This continued for a few years, my brothers and sisters, until a great change happened in my life in the year 2023. After graduating from La Salle Green Hills, I applied to the big three universities in the country and was even offered a scholarship at the University of the Philippines de Leman. This was the time when I truly felt the strong grasp of the Almighty Father in my life. I felt that He was protecting me from a trap that if I would pursue my ambition, I will eventually lose my spiritual life. My brothers and sisters, the Father Almighty suddenly changed the desires of my heart. I wanted to become deeper in spiritual knowledge, and I began to weigh everything in the balance of eternity. Success in the temporal world will all soon be useless, but decades from now versus eternity in heaven with the appointed son, Pastor Apollo Sikibuloy. Praise the Father. So at that time, my brothers and sisters, Pastor announced that the ACQCM has been formally recognized by the Commission on Higher Education with its Bachelor of Arts degree in Kingdom Theology. And without hesitation, my brothers and sisters, I opened up my desire of mine to join in the ACQCM to the appointed son, and indeed, he did not fail me, my brothers and sisters. In a blink of an eye, I saw myself flying to the New Jerusalem, signed up as a full-time miracle worker, and being enrolled in the ACQ College of Ministries. Praise the Father. I saw that in spite of my shortcomings and failures, He never failed me. Instead, He doubled His love and goodness in my life. It is indeed true that the goodness of the Almighty Father through the appointed Son leadeth us to repentance. Praise the Father. I was a bit overwhelmed, my brothers and sisters, upon coming here since the military training was already ongoing. I also had physical challenges. Aside from this, everything was an adjustment from the environment to the attitude of my Cebuano peers and the lifestyle. Despite this, whenever when I would feel weak, the Almighty Father's words through His appointed Son would comfort me. In the ACQCM, I was able to know that the God we serve is not only a God, but He is also our Father and our King. That is when I truly understood that it must be the Father's will in my life to be done and He must be the captain of my life ship. Praise the Father. And I know that this is just the beginning of my sail towards the finish line, of becoming just like the appointed son. To all the young people in the world today, the fathers through the appointed son's plan is greater than your own. Choose to dedicate yourself as early as now. Weigh everything in the balance of eternity. Decide now while the appointed son is still here. Praise the Father. And at this moment in time, I would like to thank my source of strength and inspiration, our beloved pastor, Pastor Apollo Sikibuloy. Pastor, you may not know me personally po, but from the bottom of my heart, I am truly grateful and thankful. Because even if I was successful in the outside world, it would not matter if it, if it, it would be worthless without salvation. But now, I see myself following you, Pastor, enduring all forms of baptism of fire, being victorious in my spiritual journey, and moldes, molded as vessels of honor, becoming true sons and daughters who will ultimately be leaders, ministers, and coordinators of the kingdom nation, together with all of my batchmates of class Valiente. Praise the Father. <laughs> Pastor, we will not fail you, sir. Praise the Father. With this, I give back all the glory, honor, praise, and thanksgiving to the Almighty Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, creator of us all, through His appointed Son, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy. Praise the Father. So, it's really true that our Almighty Father can really change us and bring us out from the darkness into His light. And a lot of you here may be lost, confused, Searching for the truth, 
searching for your way back to God, our Almighty Father. But there is a story in the Bible that of a shepherd and a, a, flo a, fl a flock of 100 sheep. And then one of the sheep of the, of the 100 was lost. And so it was all alone. It was away from the shepherd. But you know what the shepherd, our Almighty Father, did? He left all of his 99 sheep to just go find that one lost missing sheep. That's how much he cares for you and me and every, each and every single one of us. Amen. So it's no accident that each and every single one of you are here today because that's already a sign that God, our Almighty Father, has already called you and he's calling you to come into his kingdom. Amen. So let's continue to contemplate on this next song that I offer and worship our Almighty Father in spirit and in truth. Praise the Father. A big hand clap offering for Almighty Father. He's the keeper of the lost 
Father, say, Father, big hand clap offering from my Father. Praise the Father's name. blessed the message of the song we just heard say amen. amen truly my brothers and sisters we are all blessed for we have the almighty father within us to, today my brothers and sisters and he always find us way to worship him in spirit and in truth so as we continue and worship the almighty father let us praise and thank give our thanksgiving to the almighty father with this song of praise praise the father hallelujah Let's clap our hands to the Almighty Father. At times the load is heavy, at times the road is long. When circumstances come your way and you think you can't go on when you're feeling at your weakest the father will be strong he'll provide an answer when you found all hope is gone he'll find a way Praise the Father. The Almighty Father will always find 
a way for you to be here and join us in our thanksgiving and worship today. Everybody says amen. amen. Praise the Father. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. amen. And because of His Son as His gift, we need to reciprocate that law of giving also back for Him. Amen. amen. And the Word of God said, listen to this. Now all has been heard, but here is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. That's why Pastor Apollo Sikiboloi is divinely embodied of that real duty in obedience to the Father's will, especially in giving back the tithes and offering, for the tithes and offering belongs to our Almighty Father, and it is holy unto Him. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. And giving back our tithes and offering is the only way that the Father will unlock His blessings, and that blessing is more than what we can think, or more than what we can imagine, and also as promised in Malachi 3.10 and in Luke 6. 38. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Receive the blessings today. So as sons and daughters of the Almighty Father here in the KLC of Chicago, let us be one with His dear appointed Son in giving our tithes and offering with a cheerful heart for the Father love of cheerful giver. Praise the Father.
Amen. Keep on praising. Amen. Let us give the Father a big hand clap offering. Praise the Father's name. Hallelujah. We are thankful today's Gospel Concert Healing Crusade because this is not only a time that we will be entertained by the music, but this is a time of worshiping the Almighty Father in spirit and in truth. Because in our midst today, the spirit of the Almighty Father, through His appointed Son, He is here in us. He is always here. He will always be with you and answer all of your needs because the Almighty Father is the source of all of everything. Just worship and praise Him. Amen? Do you know there's a power of praise and worship? When you praise Him, it will solve all of your problems. When you praise Him, it will answer all of your prayers. And I believe that all of you who came here, you have a need, whether it is financial needs, physical needs, material needs, and above all, spiritual needs. And any moment from now, we'll be hearing the message of the Almighty Father through His appointed Son, which is the Word of God, the food of our soul. But before we will come to the most important part of our Thanksgiving worship presentation today, let us once again contemplate upon the goodness of the Almighty Father as the kingdom will render this kingdom singers will offer and render these songs. I will praise Him. Praise the Father's name. Hallelujah. Praise the Father. Let's clap our, our hands to the Almighty Father. Hallelujah.
This is the fulfillment of the word of the Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, that is said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, that our Father, the King who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now, we have witnessed how the Almighty Father completed the work of salvation in humanity, that He had chosen a man from the fallen Adamic race to complete the works of salvation by bringing unto us the message of the kingdom, which is the gospel of the kingdom. In Mark 11, 20 to 24, what's, if the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all over the world, then the end shall come. And now, the kingdom is already here. The message of the gospel of the kingdom is now preached, which is the message of repentance. And we are thankful today because in the Old Testament, He sent Noah to warn the people from the coming judgment that will fall upon this earth. And He brought also the message of repentance to all the people. And in the time of Moses, God also sent Him to deliver them out from the bondage of Egypt. And in these last days, He sent a modern Noah and a modern Moses to preach unto us the message of the gospel of the kingdom that will deliver us from the bondage of sin, of deception, of the serpent seed in these last days. And we are thankful today. We are so very fortunate in these last days. He sent unto us His appointed Son. He is just an ordinary man like us. But He was called and chosen by the Almighty Father in these last days to feed us with the spiritual manna of revelation and to bestow unto us the message of repentance and the complete package of blessings. Let us welcome the appointed Son of God, our beloved pastor, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty Father, we thank you today with all of our hearts. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. Bless all the televiewers of this local program. May they be enlightened also and come to the light and become sons and daughters in the last days. Thank you, Father, for making everything possible for them to hear the gospel of the kingdom of salvation and redemption from the serpent seed. I give you back the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanksgiving. In your precious almighty name, our Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Hallelujah. One big victory shout. Praise the Father. If you're happy, shake the hands of those around you and say the Father's blessings be upon you. Praise the Father. Under grace means it is still the, the, the day of man. It is still the day in which man can run in his own way and do many, many things in his own way and still be under the grace of the Almighty Father uh, at that moment of time. But when the day of the Lord comes, whether man likes it or not, the day of the Lord is the day of accounting. It is a day of judgment, like in the days of Noah. 120 years were given to man. In the days of Noah. Those are the days of men. After 120 years, then it is the day of the Lord. In the day of the Lord, whether you like it or not, tribulation will come and engulf humanity. This is a form of judgment that only the Father knows, no one knows, except those to whom the Father will reveal His will. And in those moments, Noah was found to be the most righteous of the men of his days. So the voice of God came to him to reveal his plan of uh, the judgment 
that is now going to be poured out upon humanity because of their wickedness. Noah was chosen and to him was revealed the plan of God. You know the plan. It is now revealed unto us because it's written in the scriptures. But before the scriptures were written, it is only Noah that knew about the plan. The plan was 120 years, man's evil deeds will run its full course. But after that, it's going to be the day of the Lord. So Noah, I will reveal to you my plan. And the plan was revealed. That Noah is going to build an ark on top of the mountain. And 120 years will be the time limit wherein man can decide to come and join Noah uh, and repent. Those were the days of men. And after 120 years when the ark was building and the ark was finished, the day of the Lord came. You know what happened in the day of the Lord. The judgment came, whether they knew it or not, whether they like it or not. So the uh, message that I would like to send to the world today is the same message I have been preaching so strongly, especially when the Father revealed to me that April 13, 2005 is the day of the Lord. I was already preaching about the day of the Lord before April 13, 2005, but not as strongly as when the Father revealed it to me after April 13, 2005. Praise the Father. You know the plan. That when the ark was finished, this is the message I would like to let the world know. And this is the message I would like to, uh, uh, to let it come across all humanities that are listening to me. The sin of the people of Noah is that they do not know. They do not know. Did Noah do his job in revealing the Father's will to the people? I think so. Did the people knew that he was building something on top of the mountain? I think so. Because he was not inside the cave building it. He was on top of the mountain. And everybody knew about it. Because there was not that big a community in the time of Noah. So they knew what will happen. They knew that Noah was doing something even if it, is, it was not a conventional thing to do, to build an ark on top of the mountain, nevertheless, the ark of building the ark was already a witness to that generation that something terrible is going to happen. Did Noah fellowship about the will of the Father to other people? I think so. He has many relatives. He has relatives and friends. And his friends and relatives has Friends and relatives also. And, and they have communicated this. Just imagine 120 years of building the ark. And you think the news that Noah was saying that water will cover the face of the earth. And if you will not join me, you will all drown. Because God said to me that 120 years will be the day in which you will live and run your full course, and after that, it will be a day of judgment. Noah fellowshiped and shared the will of the Father to his generation. But why did the Word of God say that the people did not know? They knew, but they ignored Noah. Praise the Father. They knew, but they ignored the message. Now, I am the modern Noah today. I am shouting on the top of my lungs 
that this is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord means it is not a one thing judgment that will happen to all the world. There will be pockets of judgments that are going to happen in all cities of the world. Not one city in the world is going to be exempted from this. It's only a matter of time before your city is, be, is going to be visited by the Father's judgment. It is according to the wickedness of that city. It is according to the wickedness of that nation. It is according to the wickedness of that country that the judgment will be visited on a, on a first priority basis. So now is the time for us to include God in our plans. So we won't be accused of the Father that we are the generation who are ignorant of His will. We won't be accused of the Father that the doors were closed, but still we don't know. Still we ignored the warning. All nations and all cities of the world are included in this. And what is pitiful is that when this judgment would come, they would come all of a sudden and then destroy all, anything in its path, including human beings. And what is so important about a nation are not boats, airplanes, houses, and properties. It's the human beings that lived in that country that are the most important in the sight of the Father. Do not ever plan your life without including the Father in your plan. Because the Word of God says, as it was in the days of Noah, they were drinking and eating, marrying and given in marriage, planting and building, planning until Noah entered into the ark and they knew it not. So they were so casual as if nothing is going to happen. See, people live casually. They are only thinking about what they will eat, what they drink. It's thinking about whom to marry tomorrow. There's nothing wrong about that, probably. Thinking about... Uh, uh, his business. His thoughts is only upon enriching himself with the wealth of the world. Planning. Thinking about all of these things. When they go to bed, when they wake up in the morning, never a thought came to them to include God in their plan. And they don't know that their plans are going to be snuffed out in just a second. They don't know that the following day, all of this is going to be washed away. They were all going to die the next following morning, and they don't know it. They were still full of themselves, full of their plans. My brothers and sisters, this is the day of the Lord. Include the Father in your plan. The day of the Lord is a day of judgment. The days of tolerance and grace are over. This is the time when sin is going to be punished and all forms of wickedness will not escape the judgment of the Father Almighty. Pati way labot, ma, ma, malabot na diha. In fact, many of these places here around Davao is below sea level. So, is Davao included in the Father's judgment, in the Father's day of the Lord? Yes, all cities are included because not all, all people in Davao city are kingdom citizens, 
And probably if the Father will save a city, it is because of the righteous that are in that city. The Father will save the city because of the righteous that are there. See, even in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah are two wicked cities whose wickedness came unto the throne of the Father. And then the Father in heaven came and manifested himself through an angel and brought two angels with him. And there was a plan for the judgment of those two cities. And the plan was also revealed to the most righteous at the time. And he showed himself up to Abraham. Abraham knew that it was God in a theophany or in a, an angelic form that visited him that day with two other angels. And immediately they had a conversation that there will be a, a punishment or a judgment that will befall the two cities. It was revealed to Abraham. Abraham had a nephew by the name of Lot with his family, a wife and two daughters. God said, I will send the two angels to confirm if the wickedness of these two cities are really right and ripe in the sight of God. So the two angels came over and uh, visited the city and they visited the nephew of Abraham, Mr. Lot and his wife and two daughters. You know, when the uh, men of the city saw the two angels walking around, they were strangers in those two cities, and they knew where they went. They went into the house of Lot. They visited the house of Lot because the plan was revealed to the house of Lot. Being the nephew of Abraham, the Father's mercy was upon the house of Lot to save them from the impending doom and judgment. You know, when the men of the city saw the two angels came into the house of Abraham, all of a sudden, all of them congregated, and they want to take those two angels with them. So they, uh, they uh, surrounded the house of, uh, of Lot, and wanted to take the two strangers with them. Lot saw the intention of, uh, the evil intention of uh, the men of the city. And so Lot said, uh, don't touch and harm my two visitors. I have two daughters here. I'll give them to you. Do whatever you want to do with them. But do not harm and touch my visitors, my guests. The men of the city did not like the daughters of Abraham or of Lot. They liked the two angels because they were handsome. <laughs> so probably all of these men, because of their wickedness, were ex-men. <laughs> ex-men means they look like men, but they really are not men. We have many ex-men here in the kingdom. But they are now back into being men. Amen. The angels saw that. And so they blocked the men on their path and blinded them through their angelic powers that they were not able to see the door. And in the dawn, during dawn in the morning, uh, I think dawn is 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock in the morning, the two angels took the family of Abraham with instruction to go to Mount Zoar because that is where the salvation will be in getting out of Sodom and Gomorrah with instruction not for anyone to look back because anyone that will look back will perish on the way. And Mrs. Lot 
did not follow the instructions. She looked back and she became a pillar of salt. So out of four, there were only three that were saved. And before that, there was a bargaining between Abraham and God Almighty. If there are 50 righteous men in Sodom, will you destroy the city? No. 40 righteous men, will you destroy the city? No. For the sake of 40 righteous men, I will not. 30, Lord. No. For the sake of 30, I will not destroy the city. 20. No. For the sake of 20, up to 10. If there are 10 righteous men, will you destroy them? No, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy the city. There are not even 10 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. There were four. And one perished. There were only three. So they went to Mount Zohar. And then the judgment came down upon those two wicked cities. Fire and brimstone rained upon those two cities. Praise the Father. Now you cannot even find the traces of Sodom and Gomorrah because they are buried under the Dead Sea. If you go to Israel, the Dead Sea is the lowest point on the earth. And underneath the Dead Sea is, are the two cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. You cannot even find a trace of them. That is how the judgment fell upon them. It is also the same today as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, eating, drinking, planning, marrying, given in marriage. This is all that dominates their mind. This is all that dominates the events of their, of their days. Never did they include God in their plan until the day came and destroyed them all. They knew it not. My brothers and sisters, we are very fortunate because we know. We are children of the day. We are children of the light because we know. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 9 says, this is what it says. When the day of the Lord comes, behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, bought with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Babayara ng makasalanan, ang kanyang kasalanan. You see, the day of the Lord since uh, 70 A.D., uh, the day of man since 70 AD or since the time of Abraham up to 70 AD is the Jewish age that's 2,070 years still the day of man from 70 AD up to April 13, 2005 it's 1,935 years it is still the day of, of man so long years no? in Abraham's time it's 120 years in our times, it's 1,935 years. In the times of the Jews, it's, one, it's 2,070 years. In our times, Gentile times, it's 1,935 years. The days of man, the days of grace. I thank the Father. When he gave me this ministry, he showed me that vision when I was 14 years old. When I was in... Uh, High school, I did not know that I already had a calling from the Father. When he showed me this vision, for the first time, I had seen that vision that I did not know was going to be a part of the ministry I am having today, which is depicting the second coming of our Almighty Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I did not know that I will be the receptacle of his coming. The residence of his coming. The point where he will live here on the earth and announce to the whole world the calling of his sons and daughters to come to his ark of salvation. Praise the Father. In front of our house in Parang, Cotabato, is a, 
big gasoline depots because we live along the seashore. So the big tubes are running through the ground, through the sea, and big tanker boats come, deliver gasoline, and also take out gasoline from those depots. And in my vision, I saw those depots burst into flame, all of them. And there was pandemonium. There was panic all over. I saw people running in all directions, bringing what they can bring with them. I saw people running with their chickens, with their little children. They have nowhere to go because everything is on fire. They would go to the sea. The gasoline has poured out into the sea and it is all aflame. So there is no point of escape. I wake up with that kind of a very terrible dream. The next day, I had that dream again. But this time it was rather worse than the first. Because I saw that even the heavens were on fire, being roared like a mat. And I saw this bright figure come down from heaven. And then I saw the same scene, only it was not locally. It was not only in Parang Cotabato. It was all over the world that this scene was replicated all over the world. People from all over, all kinds of races I saw, running to and fro in panic and pandemonium. Now I saw people on fire. I saw people running fire on their back. I saw people running everywhere. Then I saw that caption that I did not know was in the scriptures. What is that caption? The caption I came to learn in Bible school is uh, the caption I saw in my vision that I did not know was in the Bible. It says, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. It's in Acts chapter 2 verse 20 and I did not know it was there until I studied the Bible from cover to cover, page to page. Because in Bible school you were told to learn the Bible from page to page. And if possible, memorize it. <laughs> so that's what we did. And then I come across the caption I saw in my vision. And I did not know that that is going to be my ministry in the last days. It is the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what Sephaniah chapter 1, 14 to 17 says also. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasted greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities, against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. And their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. That's the day of the Lord. So you see, people that are perishing. Uh, I think in 2005 or 2004, we also have a very devastating tsunami, earthquake and tsunami that happened in Thailand. And it destroyed about 300,000 souls were ushered into eternity without hearing the salvation of the Father. It's terrible. So each one should prepare for this. Because when the judgment would come, it will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. It will be like the days of Noah. Where? When they did not expect it, then it came all of a sudden and took them all away. And they did not have the chance to repent. Blessed are you people who are listening to me because you now have 
You are still alive. You are still alive. You are still listening to me. Hallelujah. The day of the Lord is also a day of cleansing. I thank the Father because the cleansing He gave to us is a spiritual cleansing. What would you like? A physical cleansing of the land or a spiritual cleansing of the land? I thank the Father that we who have listened to the message of the appointed Son and accepted it and repented, you receive a spiritual spiritual cleansing Amen. so you will be saved from that bitter judgment that will come and visit people one of these days because there's already a mark on your forehead that you are one of the chosen appointed sons of the father sons and daughters of the father in the last days so the day of the Lord is a day of cleansing calamities disasters and tribulations will continue to intensify and escalate. These packets of judgment are the Father's means to purge the world from its wickedness. Praise the Father. These are days in which men should include the Father in their plans. Because you've been planning all your life and then you don't know that you will be visited one of these days. Because your city or your town or your barangay is going to be included in these packets of judgments. What will you do? This is the trumpet message. The rapture is happening right now. Amen. So if you listen to my message and accept it, you have already been raptured spiritually to your new Jerusalem. The Father will put a mark on you. And he will not include you in this judgment that will happen in the cities. You are already a resident of the New Jerusalem. If there is an Ark of Salvation for those in the times of Noah, if there is a Mount Zoar for those in the times of Job, if there is a Mount Goshen for those in the time of Egypt when uh, the ten plagues were poured out upon Egypt, there is also a new Jerusalem for all of the people of the Father in the last days. If you are a citizen of the new Jerusalem, the Father's protection is upon you. If you are a citizen of the new Jerusalem spiritually, the Father's protection is on you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated, my brothers and sisters. May the Father bless you. So that the ministry of the appointed son is to, is to uh, deal with the harvest of souls that are coming into the kingdom to become sons and daughters. All of you are harvested as sons and daughters. You are part of the fruit the Father is looking after. That's why he sent me and gave me a very unique message which is the fulfillment of the Old and the New Testament. Amen. The Son is the fulfillment of the New Old and New Testament. Amen. That when you come and listen to my message, the completion of the Father's work of salvation effectively will happen in you. You are the complete finished product the Father is looking after. You are part of the harvest. You know, in the judgment, there are two harvests that are happening. Harvest of the wicked and harvest of the righteous. I'm so glad I am part of the big work of the Father being the appointed son in heading the biggest harvest of righteous people who are freed of the serpent seed. Sons and daughters of the Father coming into the kingdom. Being raptured into the kingdom. Praise the Father. You are part of that, the harvest of the, rapt, of the righteous. We call it the rapture. Everybody says the rapture. the rapture. Revelation chapter 14, 14 to 16 says, 
And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud, one sat like, upon the, uh, like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and his hand in his right hand, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud trust in his sickle uh, on the earth, and the earth was reaped. There will be no harvest if the fruit has not come out, if the grain has not come out. Karon ang kompleto ng kalwasan. Kay lugas naman mo. You are the seed. The day of the Lord is a day of separation. It's a day of separation. The righteous will be separated from the wicked. That's why in the kingdom ministry there is always separation. In your family, many, many have testified. This is the first time it happened to our family that we have been divided. My daughter is already there in the uh, New Jerusalem. And I don't want her to go there. I don't want my son to go there. But he went anyway. Now we are separated because I told my son uh, from this time on that you will leave our house and go and join Pastor Kibuloy. I have no son like you. What did the son say? From now on, I have no mother like you. <laughs> no, he did not say that. He said, Mother, I will still pray for you. <laughs> but nevertheless, I will follow the will of the Father. Wherever the will of the Father takes me, there I will go because now I am living not in the will of man, not the will of, the will of blood, not in the will of the flesh, but in the will of God. Praise the Father. There's separation. It's a day of separation. The wicked is going to be separated from the righteous. Let us look at Matthew 13, 38 to 43. This is happening right now. The parable of the wheat and the tares. Can you read that in, in, in the English, please? Yes, Pastor. Starting with verse 38, it says, The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do in equity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who have ears to hear, let him hear. The field is the world. We are going all over the world. Amen. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. You are the good seed. Amen. Children of the kingdom who are free of the serpent seed. He didn't say the children of the church. <laughs> the children of the kingdom are the good seed. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. If you do not belong to the kingdom citizenship of being freed from, from the serpent seed and you are called sons and daughters, you are still called according to the name of your denomination or religion. You are a slave and a servant. You are part of the children of the wicked one. Because whether you know it or not, you still have the serpent seed. Whether you know it or not, when you have the serpent seed, you are a son or a daughter of the devil. Whether you know it or not. Whether you like it or not. Why did I know not, Pastor? I have a religion, Pastor. That's why you are doubly deceived. Because the devil told you, your religion is not enough. When your religion is not enough. You have to repent. You have to join me. You have to listen to my message. That's why I am sent in the last day. <laughs> Hallelujah. It did not say there, then, it did not say that then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the denomination 
of their religion. <laughs> he says, they shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Talking about us. Because our relationship to him now is, he is our father. We are his children, sons and daughters of the father almighty. In the times of this tribulation, the Father always provides a way of escape. As I said in the beginning of my message, Noah in Genesis 6, 17 to 18, and Lot, Mount Zohar in Genesis 19, 22. Noah, he provided the ark. Lot, he provided Mount Zohar. Moses, he provided the Goshen. Now, in the days of the Son of Man, in the days of the appointed Son of God. What did He provide? A new Jerusalem. He, she is our mother in the Spirit. You can only call her your mother if you are born of the Spirit of your Father. What is the Spirit of your Father? It is the Spirit of obedience to His will. That's why I don't follow the wishes of the flesh anymore. I don't follow the will of the flesh. I don't follow the will of blood. I don't follow the will of my physical family. If you have a wife, I don't follow the will of my wife anymore. If you have a husband, I don't follow the will of my fleshly husband anymore. I follow the will of the Father. Oh, me, I would like to continue in the kingdom, but my wife does not want to. If it is only me, I will stay and follow the will of the Father in the kingdom and become a kingdom citizen through and through. But my wife doesn't want to. Make a choice. Don't be saying those things. Make a choice. I made a choice. <laughs> Many people doesn't want me to be in this ministry. Many people doesn't want me to become the appointed son of God. I made a choice. That's why I'm here. I paid the price. You know, my brothers and sisters, it's very hard for other people to make a choice. You know why? Because they have to pay the price. If I make a choice in following the kingdom and following the Father, uh, the will of the Father in the kingdom, my wife will leave me. A hard choice to make. Nevertheless, you have to make a choice. And be prepared to. Pay the price. Amen. That's the price you have to pay. Amen. Amen? Amen? So what would you rather have? It's according to you. I am your model. <laughs> I am your model. <laughs> I made it. There is no reason for you not to be able to make it. Praise the Father. So, in times of judgment and tribulation, the Father always provides a way of escape. Noah was provided the ark. Lot was directed to go to Mount Zohar. Moses, his people were directed to go to Goshen, where they are free from all the judgment that befell Egypt. Ten judgment befell Egypt, but they were spared. There was darkness in all of Egypt. There was no darkness in Goshen. There were lies all over Egypt. There was no lies there. Frogs and everything. There, they were spared from all the judgments. Now, in the time of the appointed Son of God, we have a new Jerusalem. A new Jerusalem is a spiritual city. A city of the redeemed. A city of kingdom citizens. Free of the serpent seed. 
a city of those who have made New Jerusalem their mother and the Father Almighty their father. By being born again in the Spirit, going through the Kitmog, going through the Tamayong. Going through their baptism of water and going through their baptism of fire and have completed the course and have become sons and daughters inheriting all things from the Father. Amen. Making the Son appointed by the Father as your model. Amen. May the Father bless you, my brothers and sisters. You may be seated. The Father's promise of protection for the righteous is already written. And is being fulfilled today. Psalms 91 verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Proverbs 12 21. There shall no evil happen to the just. But the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Proverbs 10 30. The righteous shall never be removed. But the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. It's all there. And the father has provided those promises. Not only for the days before, but more so today. The new Jerusalem is the founder's Goshen. Revelation 21, 1 to 4. The word of God says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I just saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 4, is already in fulfillment. The new Jerusalem, the city of the Father, has already come down to us. And it is only the righteous who are born in the spirit of obedience to His will that can see that city. Have you seen the city? Yes. Praise the Father. If you have not seen the city, you are only born in the flesh. You will go back to where you came from. But when you are born in the spirit, you have seen the city like me. You will be loyal to that city. You will forget your fleshly city where you came from. And you will become a kingdom citizen of that city. Because that city is a spiritual city prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And this is the Father's will. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the, for the former heaven and the former earth were passed away. The old heavens and the old earth are passed away. The old heavens of the uh, the old heavens and the old earth of the Jewish, the old heavens and the old earth of the uh, church age. You know what what those are. The earth are the people that believed in those doctrines or dogmas that they hold on to that they believe will get them to heaven. That is their heaven. That's all past and gone. A new heaven is here. What is the new heaven wherein righteousness dwells? This is the teachings of the sun. Amen. Where you cannot go there if you have a serpent seed. Amen. Where you cannot go there if you have not repented. Where you cannot go there if you have not eradicated the serpent seed and surrendered your will to the Father and you've gone through your kitbuk and your tamayong and have passed the test. And finally, was able to overcome in fulfillment of much, uh, Revelation 21, 7. That is the heaven you are holding on to. The teachings and revelations of the appointed son. Amen. Who is the fulfillment of the Old the New Testament? Did you receive that? Amen. Have you received that? Amen. You are the new earth. Amen. That's the new heaven. Where righteousness dwell, and that is the heaven where the Father can dwell. Because He cannot dwell with people with the serpent seed. Amen. He cannot. He will not dwell there. That's why He produced me. Amen. And he pro through me, He produced you. Amen. This is the new heaven. This is the new earth. This is His new Jerusalem. This is the holy city wherein the people of God will come and inhabit it. This is the new city. And he will dwell with them. That's why as the son is here, the almighty father is with you. Amen. And the son is the manifestation of the almighty father. Amen. That's why he is able to say, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, 
neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. When he said, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, there will be no more sorrow. When somebody dies here, the meaning of there is no more death is a spiritual death. Amen. It's not physical death, first of all, because the interpretation of the scriptures is a spiritual first before it is physical. So there will be no more death. No more spiritual death here. We will not be separated from the Father anymore. Amen. Ever again, we will never be separated. Neither sorrow nor crying. So you, you see, when uh, a kingdom citizen dies, physically, he's not dead after all. He has only made a transition from the physical to the spiritual, where a spiritual body is waiting for him. That's why when somebody who is a kingdom citizen dies, whether he's your father, mother, brothers, or sisters, or relatives, there is no more sorrow, no more crying. We don't sorrow as those that do not have hope. In fact, when somebody dies here, many people outside are wondering, why are we rejoicing? Instead of sorrowing, why are we rejoicing? Why are we having a party? Why are you having a party? Because my father died. <laughs> why are you singing happy songs? Because my sister died. That is strange to the world outside. Because to them, death is a final separation. To us, it's not. It is only a transition. Amen. Neither shall be any more pain. So there's no more pain of somebody leaving you, and it's painful. For the former things are passed away. All of this have passed away. The day of the Lord should not be misconstrued by the children of the Father as a day of judgment for them. No, it is a day of rejoicing for us. Amen. It's a day in which righteousness will reign. It's a day in which the Father and His righteous children, free of the serpent seed, will rule over the earth. So people of the world, you better listen to the message that is being brought to you by the modern Noah of your day. Amen. The Father made me an appointed son, and he already has designated this from the beginning. This is already a, uh, a uh, pre-designation. This is already a, uh, a, uh, a done deal in the sight of the Father. It is just going to be fulfilled in the last days. And now, I used my freedom of choice to follow the Father's will. And what is important is the message that comes from me. Because the words that come from me are not coming from me. They are coming from the Father who lives in me. And they are your salvation in the last days. The Father is now calling all of you, all over the world, wherever you are, Listening via Joy TV, listening via KVMD in Los Angeles, Joy TV in local TV in Los Angeles, uh, in uh, Canada, all of you, all over the Philippines, through Channel 39, Channel 43, through the 500 cable satellite providers, through Globe Cash World TV, satellite TV, all over the world, wherever you are, through the internet, through radio. All of these avenues are being used of the Father. All of these media outlets are being used of the Father to reach out unto all of you. Before the judgment is able to visit you, you have to make a decision. Not tomorrow, not later on, but today. Today is the day of your salvation. Praise the Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Father Almighty, my brothers and sisters. All of you who are listening to me for the first time, I'll pray for you. All of you 
who have listened to me for so many times, but that yet, not yet have made a decision, not, not, uh, uh, not made a decision yet, uh, which is very important for you to make right now. Right now is your day. Don't delay. Judgment might visit you in the time that is unexpected. Personally, probably, individually, by group, by, by tribe, by city, or by a nation, or uh, a country at large. You don't know when the visitation of judgment will come and take your soul away. Don't waste any time. Now is your time. Praise the Father. Almighty Father, we thank you for this message today. A manner of revelation, share that to all of your people once more. To awaken those that are asleep and to make a life unto those who are dead. And to shed, shed the light unto those who are in darkness. To those who are hopeless, to give them hope. And to those who are lifeless, to give them life. Today, Father, your words have been spoken from your appointed Son. The message that has become a manna of the revelation today. That have enlightened their darkened mind. Now, I ask you, Father, to help them make a decision. A very important decision at this moment right now. Not to delay that decision because this is the day of the Lord. It's a day of judgment. You don't know when it will visit you. You don't know personally, corporately, as a nation, as a country, as a group of people. This judgment is going to visit. You don't know that. So that's why this opportune time is the time given of the Father to make a very important decision for your salvation. You've heard the message of the appointed son. I'm sounding the trumpet. This is the time of the rapture. This is the time of the harvest. Be with those making a commitment and a vow to follow that. If they are not yet saved spiritually right now, Father, make a way for this. Words to become light. Enter into their hearts and minds. Thank you, Father. In your precious almighty name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.
Okay, may the Father bless us all in the morning sun.